John, thanks for your time. Welcome to South Africa. Ah, thank you. What really you happy here? to be here. Um, I came here to speak at the Blockchain South African Conference, and it was a good opportunity to come and visit South Africa in general, spend some time in Cape Town, now Johannesburg, we'll uh, spend a few more nights and really enjoy and try to understand mostly the economy because that's one of my interests. So what have you been saying to people at, uh, about uh, blockchain and, uh, uh, and then Bitcoin? So um, I'm just mostly here to educate so that people have the right information. And uh, I mostly focus on Bitcoin itself. Uh, to me, uh, the word blockchain was more like a buzzword uh, because Bitcoin didn't sound very good in many circumstances. Uh, but to me, Bitcoin is the real innovation and the really, really important part of this crypto movement where in 10, 20 years from now, everyone will st still be talking about Bitcoin, but not as much about blockchain. Uh, we will have, in my view, one blockchain the way we have one internet today. Right. And everybody will be just either utilizing it or not. So, so you arguing that blockchain is going to become, and Bitcoin, they're going to become mainstream. Let's put it that way. Yes, and uh, to me it will be just one years. thing. Yes, uh, in about 10 to 20 years, I believe that uh, people will be very comfortable with using Bitcoin as this global currency that anyone else in the world will also accept and believe in and trust uh, the way we utilize the internet today and everyone trusts the internet and we're sending messages through the internet we'll be sending bitcoin through the internet as payments all around the world does that mean that you are suggesting that bitcoin is going to supplant the u.s dollar or indeed any of these other global currencies that we currently have um i mean Bitcoin supplanting the U.S. dollar in the next 10 to 20 years is very ambitious. Um, it would be interesting if it happens. Um, I, don't, I think the U.S. dollar has a lot of strength in it left, uh, but I certainly believe that uh, it will supplant many other uh, global currencies around the world because the populations of those countries will just trust it better the way um, M-Pesa uh, supplanted, you know, the, the, the local currency of, uh, of Kenya, uh, Bitcoin will do the same for many countries around the world within 10 to 20 years. Which means you must have a view about how the authorities are going to respond to this, as you see it, growing strength and usage of Bitcoin. Uh, many authorities are going to be very hostile to it. We're already seeing it happen. India has been very hostile towards Bitcoin and uh, several others are as well. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's the people of a country that run the politics of that country. Yeah. And if enough people in your country are using Bitcoin and utilizing Bitcoin, that's what will eventually reflect in the policies of those countries. Yeah. Uh, we can even look at Panama, for example, a country that doesn't have its own national currency. They, Panama uses the US dollar. Uh, so I don't think it's outside of uh, a general thinking that there won't be a country that's having enough problems with their own currency uh, that they will consider yeah. a Bitcoin as long as the people of that country do have connectivity. You do need a good functional internet. Uh, Zimbabwe, a neighboring country right here with South Africa, has been having their currency struggles uh, for a while now, two hyperinflations in the last 15 years. And um, once uh, people are comfortable with the connectivity, I'm not sure how good the internet is in Zimbabwe. I have not been there yet. I'm heading there from here. Yeah. And I'm very, very curious. Uh, but you do still need internet. You still need connectivity. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised that if in 10 years, if Zimbabwe has a third hyperinflation incident, People won't just switch yeah. to Bitcoin and say, forget it. This is what we're going to be using. We need a stable currency that actually appreciates in value. Yeah. It's a classic example, actually, Zimbabwe. And I'm glad you mentioned it because we did see it with uh, the collapse of the Zimbabwe dollar in 2008, uh, where we saw it being supplanted by the US dollar and people simply dumping the Zim dollar and uh, using the US dollar as uh, the currency of choice. But I wanted to go back to the issue you raised earlier about blockchain and 
Bitcoin. Did you say they are one and the same thing? To me, they are one and the same thing. There is no clear definition of what is a blockchain. People understand what is Bitcoin somewhat, but you ask five different people what is blockchain and you're going to get five very different answers. To me, um, Bitcoin is the only blockchain that is actually functioning. Uh, I have a pretty high standard for a blockchain. Uh, a blockchain needs to be something that is decentralized. It's not under the control of any institution, uh, any group of people or a single person. Uh, but at the end of the day, a blockchain is pretty much like a database. It's a database that no one controls. And all these other companies building blockchains, all these other blockchain competitors, yeah. I don't see them as decentralized. I see them as businesses. So. And to me, they're just using the word blockchain to maybe get an advantage over their competition. Yeah. And hey, if you can use the word blockchain and you can improve uh, an element of a society, that's great. If yeah. you're gonna be you know, uh, trying to pitch, uh, let's say, um, a new database record for people's property or a new database record for people's identity or trying to uh, create a more honest voting system yeah. and you're saying you're doing it through a blockchain, I will certainly argue that, well, you're not really using a blockchain, yeah. but hey, if it makes it better, then sure, yeah. uh, I'm all for it. Sure. Give me a sense of uh, the kind of role that you see blockchain playing uh, in the world economy. And I think we can also bring it down, I guess, to developing economies in particular. Because as you say, most of us don't understand what it is, and what role potentially it can play. So I think the biggest role is still going to be this introduction of politically neutral money to the world. Do we want that? Um, I want it. And uh, the and the reason why I want it is goes back to uh, the one element that really got me interested in Bitcoin. I heard about Bitcoin in the very early days with uh, situations like Silk Road, where it was being used to, pur to purchase uh, things that could be illicit in one country or another, mm. uh, the WikiLeaks funding. But the event that drove me into Bitcoin was the Cyprus incident in 2013. Uh, April 2013, the Cyprus bank shut down. It's a country in the European Union on the Euro, uh, developed country by all metrics and they simply closed the banks and they confiscated 50% of everyone's money above 100,000 euros. So if you are a retired individual that worked your whole life and you saved a lot of money yeah. or you're a business yeah. Yeah. and you had 200,000 euros in the bank, they took 50,000 euros sure. because to bail in the banking system. And that's when I realized that Bitcoin is the first unconfiscatable asset of value humans have ever owned. There is nothing else that you owned that's unconfiscatable. Yeah. Um, you can hide some gold in your backyard, but yeah. someone with a metal detector can come around. Money in your bank can be frozen and taken, as we saw in Cyprus. Your land could be taken away. Even if your government has good property rights and they're not gonna take it away, you don't know who's gonna rule your country in the future. You don't know if another country is gonna take over. It's happening, uh, uh, it, it happened even recently with Russia taking over a piece of Ukraine uh, with Crimea. It's happening in the Republic of Georgia as well. Sure. That's boring in Russia. These things happen uh, quite often. And uh, here, since I've been in South Africa, I'm hearing uh, uh, people, uh, a little controversy over the upcoming uh, new laws that could come in that would allow the government of South Africa to, yeah. ex to expatriate the land. And so yeah. everything you own is confiscatable yeah. by someone with a bigger gun, yeah, as I it's, like it's, to it's, say, it's for a but good not cause. Bitcoin. And it's not as it seems <laughs> sometimes to the outside world. But I wanted to come back and talk a little bit more um, about Bitcoin. Lately, 
Yes, people have uh, been speculative in their approach to Bitcoin. Put in a few thousand rand and then you see the rand weekend and bingo, you've got a lot of money in your bank account. And on the other hand, we've also seen the crazy uh, volatility that is it, uh, uh, Bitcoin. Um, do you see Bitcoin, as some people have been beginning saying, as um, an asset? I do. Um, I see Bitcoin as a brand new asset with properties that we don't have in the current system. One of them is the unconfiscatability, one of them is censorship resistant value transfer, and the third one is hard money because there will only be 21 million Bitcoins uh, and uh, if Bitcoin is becoming popular and more used by default, the value of Bitcoin has to rise uh, because there is only so much Bitcoin to go around, but it's built for the digital age, so it could be infinitely divisible. Gold couldn't do that. A gram of gold uh, was hard to subdivide, and that's why silver was complementary money to gold that would allow you to use silver at smaller levels. Bitcoin is designed to be used at small levels as well, especially with second layer, more um, robust solutions for small payments. Um, so, um, so I do see um, how it, it, it's going to really benefit the world. It will. Yes. And as an asset. It is an asset. And at the moment, because it's mostly a speculative asset. Yeah. It, it can do a good job in uh, giving you a more efficient portfolio. Yeah. Um, at the moment, we are having a little bit of a financial crisis due yeah. to the coronavirus. Yeah. And Bitcoin is still a speculative asset, not that different from the stock market, which yeah. is also a speculative asset. True. So as uh, people panic over the economics and... Uh, People are afraid they might lose their job, their company might collapse, the stocks of those companies go down. Uh, there is less interest in speculating in something like Bitcoin. Yeah. But if in a normal time period, not in a stressed economic time period, yeah. Bitcoin should be an uncorrelated asset being added to your portfolio to give you just a more efficient, balanced portfolio. So some people have been uh, making the link as well in terms of these volatilities that we have seen uh, that uh, Bitcoin has had developed some kind of correlation where you see it uh, appreciating when there's a crisis. But that relation seems to have broken down again. I suppose it's developing. But yes. Well, well, give us a sense of how you understand what's happening. Sure. Um, lots of correlations uh, or negative correlations, they work really well in certain environments. What is this one? Is it negative? Is it positive? So at the moment, it? Bitcoin is very correlated with the stock market. Um, in fact, you can make the argument that Bitcoin has always been correlated with the stock market because huh. uh, Bitcoin has been around for 11 years and it's got nothing but go up pretty well in those 11 years while we were having some one of the best uh, stock market booms in the same 10 year period. In the US for sure, yes. Uh, especially in the US and other developed markets. So, um, but because they're both private assets. Uh, but there are times where Bitcoin has been correlated with gold on smaller stretches. Uh, so it really depends more on the economic environment. A lot of people thought that gold would be a safe haven yes. during economic uh, distress. But, and I thought that as well until um, I lost my job at Bear Stearns uh, during the collapse of the 2008 financial crisis. Right. And I watched my gold position also lose 33% of its value, along with the stock market losing 50% of its value. Uh, because the, and that's when I came to the realization that I've been educating people on in the crypto space, that when the financial crisis came and people lost their jobs, they weren't interested in going out and buying gold. In fact, if you had gold, you would be selling gold to put food on the table. If you happen to have gold teeth uh, during the financial <laughs> crisis, it almost makes sense. Hey, you know, this is a really good time for me to go take that out. I can sell the gold and I can, now that the dental uh, technology is better, if you, let's say you put your gold teeth in 10, 15 years ago when yeah. gold was cheap, and now gold is more expensive, 
and you say, hey, you know, when I put my gold teeth in, gold was only $200 an ounce. Now gold is $1,500 an ounce. <laughs> Why don't I go take the gold I teeth out, teeth. Put, 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 a, uh, put a regular fake tooth in, and uh, I can sell the gold and I can, you know, put some more food on the table. So these speculative assets don't necessarily do very well in very distressed economic periods. Uh, so I was not looking forward to the market crash yeah. uh, due to coronavirus yeah. as a Bitcoin holder, but hang in there yeah. and it will recover. So, so this is what I, a question that I guess asked quite a lot. So when is it a good time to buy Bitcoin? And what kind of money do you use to buy Bitcoin? Sure. And I always say, guys, I don't know. I just report and ask questions, but I don't know the so answers to this. The, the simple answer that I always like to say is the best time to buy Bitcoin was always yesterday. Uh, you should have bought some yesterday. Um, if you have a longer time horizon, because you have to understand that Bitcoin is volatile. I mean, I remember telling my friends about Bitcoin when it was $100 per Bitcoin. I started telling my friends about it because that's when I started looking into it. Did you buy? Um, I bought not not enough. I bought a little bit, and uh, then uh, because Bitcoin gives you this property of censorship-resistant value transfer, and I really wanted to do some gambling. I wanted to bet on my sports team, and I'm like, we couldn't gamble being in the U.S. I'm like, oh my God, I have Bitcoin now. No one can stop me from gambling, and uh, and I remember like losing some Bitcoin on some bad sports bets, and I'm like, what am I doing? This thing is going to be so valuable in the future. Why am I like, you know, like, like losing it is gambling. And that's when sure. I stopped and uh, sure. um, held on to it a little bit. But I've made other bad choices with investments and companies trying like to help out. Well. So, um, so certainly um, I, don't, I don't have those anymore. Uh, but I remember some of my friends finally got interested in uh, Bitcoin later on when it was coming up on that first bubble of $1,000. And one of my friends had a very profitable business. And I remember he texted me, he's like, man, I just bought a bunch of Bitcoin. And it was right at that thou near that thousand dollar top. And I'm like, oh boy, you know, it's kind of been going like straight up. And then, and then it just fell. And I remember telling that friend, look, just hold on to it, hold on yeah. to it, it'll go back. Yeah. And then he did, he held, but then I got a message and he says, all right, the Bitcoin is back to $1,000 where I bought it three years ago. I'm just gonna, I'm happy that it's back to where it was and now I'm gonna get out. And I'm like, no, this is where, and, uh, th this is where it's gonna go up because anytime a market goes to a new all time high, yeah. it explodes. And I remember that from the NASDAQ, when the NASDAQ had its bubble in 2000, it took 15 years for the NASDAQ to recover its value. So, yeah. But when it did, and that was like 2015, it just exploded. Netflix, Amazon, Tesla's mm, coming all out. All those coming on everything. board. Everything. So I love buying into new all-time high when it's taking a long time to get there. And right now, we've been going down for two years more than two years since that $20,000 top. Yeah. And it may take us another year or two to get back to that $20,000 per Bitcoin. But when it does- Is that your forecast? That is actually, I am expecting- A couple of years and then we're back to $20,000. Yes, I, I have been one of the big bears uh, in the crypto space. Um, I was a big bull uh, on Bitcoin in 2016, 2017, but for the last two years, I have been uh, not the most popular person in the crypto space because of my bearishness on the price of Bitcoin. I actually expected Bitcoin to fall lower than $3,000 last year. Yeah. Um, and uh, right now, uh, I'm still expecting it to pull back more. Uh, I'm not expecting Bitcoin to be above 20,000 until at least a year from now, maybe sure. longer. But when it does, I'm expecting mass adoption to start yeah. to begin. It's interesting how people's positions on Bitcoin have changed. I remember Jamie Dimon, the CEO of JP Morgan, first pronouncing on Bitcoin and dismissing it. And then now we're talking today is one of the disciples. So, so companies are trying to find their way around Bitcoin as governments are. So give us some free advice in terms of perhaps government's approaches to Bitcoin. And maybe again, this whole technology uh, craze around blockchain. 
so, and how best to handle it. Look, so I would say don't be scared of it. Uh, don't be scared that your population will now have an alternative money to save and to use. Uh, because if you accept it uh, and you uh, encourage it, then the people of your country could actually start to be wealthier. And when the people of your nation get wealthier, it benefits everyone, it benefits your country. You start to create innovation. So this fear that, oh my God, people can now use this currency in any way that they like is completely misplaced. It's almost like the fear of the early internet days. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it's interesting if you look back at it, when the internet first came, and I remember I was young, I was a teenager, and all of a sudden you start uh, chatting on AOL Instant Messenger, let's Hello, say, for I'm example. Male. Was it there a movie? Yeah, <laughs> and you start chatting with just strangers, yeah. and everyone is scared of it, and yeah. they're like, yeah. oh my God, don't, you can't talk to strangers on the internet. Next thing you know, you'll just walk out of your house, someone will, a stranger will pick you up in a car, and you'll just yeah. get into It'll a disappear. car. And today we have Uber, yeah. which is one of the biggest startup uh, companies that's taken over the world yeah. with the model of a stranger picking you up yeah. in a car. Yeah. Uh, so don't be scared that there might be an alternative to money. Uh, don't be scared that there is maybe a new economic model of yeah. Austrian economics yeah. with money that is deflationary instead of inflationary. Yeah, but the, the, the issue also is understanding as well and uh, people don't quite take up what they don't quite understand. And in terms of take up of Bitcoin, what have you seen in terms of interest where you have been around South Africa? What has the, 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 the conversations been like? So a lot of people are interested in Bitcoin and they have to pay a pretty heavy premium for it. Bitcoin seems to be trading at approximately 8% higher than the US dollar uh, price of Bitcoin. And I still have not- Why is that? Um, it has to do with a lot of money, monetary controls, in that it is difficult to get, let's say, uh, the RAND out of the country and yes. into other assets. So those that are selling Bitcoin have to, it's difficult for them. So if someone is selling a, over a million RAND worth of Bitcoin, yeah. it becomes very challenging for them to get that RAND out of the country to get it back into Bitcoin, okay. for example. Okay. So because of the Foreign monetary- exchange control. Right. So because of those yeah. controls, people that are selling Bitcoin have to charge an extra premium because it costs them a lot of money. Maybe they have foreign companies. Yeah. Uh, maybe they have other means. Maybe they, have, uh, they can m put it into real estate. Maybe they have other ways. Yeah. So um, it becomes very challenging. Like, uh, what do you do with the, sure, I can, I can sell 10 million worth of RAND yeah. uh, for bit. Uh, uh, I can sell 10 million worth of Bitcoin for RAND, but now what do I do with 10 million RAND? Sure. I, I, I'm, I'm limited on what I can do with the fiat side of the, of the equation. Yeah. Uh, so that tends to drive the premium okay. higher okay. on selling the Bitcoin. But what I have not seen uh, here in South Africa is merchants accepting Bitcoin. Yeah. And that is unfortunate because if a lot of the people in your country are acquiring Bitcoin, and I have seen lots of demand from the citizens, especially in the recent environment of the RAND depreciating. Um, if some of these uh, 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 South African citizens that are acquiring Bitcoin, if yeah. they start to become wealthier, yeah. uh, they will be looking to spend that Bitcoin. Yeah. And there needs to be outlets like merchants yeah, accepting that Bitcoin. To, yeah. And they should want to accept that Bitcoin and hold on to that Bitcoin because yeah. that would could potentially make them wealthier yeah. if they're willing to hold it for a slightly longer period of time. So we need that, you know, closed economic cycle yeah. of uh, merchants accepting Bitcoin, trying yeah. to pass it on to their suppliers, trying to pay in their employees. Yeah. Uh, but the interest of the citizens uh, putting some of their wealth in Bitcoin is already here in South Africa and that is how it starts and that's how it should start. Yeah, um, I go back to the 
original question I asked you about uh, Bitcoin potentially or a cryptocurrency or some kind potentially supplanting uh, the US dollar, but I'm changing it slightly to say, do you see Bitcoin or some other cryptocurrency one day uh, becoming a currency uh, of choice for the world as it were? I don't see it for other cryptocurrency supplanting Bitcoin. I, I don't see that at all, but I do see it for Bitcoin. Uh, the reason why I don't see it for any other cryptocurrency is because what makes Bitcoin so valuable is, the, is and it, this is going to sound strange, is the fact that people like me trust the fact that Bitcoin is trustless, that nobody controls it. And the reason for that is several fold. Uh, one of them is what Bitcoin did in its first two years of existence of surviving an environment where most people thought it couldn't survive, having no value. Uh, people threw away hard drives with thousands of Bitcoin on them, not realizing how valuable it will be. Mm. Uh, these are the incidents that made Bitcoin what it is today. Mm. And no other competitor to Bitcoin, no other cryptocurrency can replicate that beginning decentralization phase of Bitcoin's creation. At the same time, the smartest programmers and engineers are programming on Bitcoin as opposed to any other alternatives. So these are the things that make Bitcoin so valuable. Um, so I do see it one day that Bitcoin will become the currency of choice for the next generation. Uh, perhaps um, in a few generations down the line, we will need a more advanced technological innovation for money. But I don't see any competitor within the next 10 to 20 years, yeah. even close uh, coming to supplanting Bitcoin. So it just becomes, can uh, Bitcoin stay decentralized enough? Can it stay secure enough? Can the encryption hold up? Could Bitcoin keep innovating? even though it's very, very slow, because it has to be slow. Uh, the engineers of the Bitcoin code can't follow the Silicon Valley model of move fast and break things, right. because you can't break it. Uh, it's too valuable, it's sure. too important. And the slower it moves, the more people trust it. And I do see it challenging, uh, even the US dollar one day, uh, but for the time being, uh, let's just, uh, hope that it stays stable. Uh, Bitcoin transactions always work. The Bitcoin uh, system is 99.99% has been functional since day one. Sure. It almost never goes down and is dependable. And uh, as long as it stays that way, uh, people will start to appreciate it more and more. John, thank you. Thank you.